Friends, my name is Jeremy Pegram, and I serve as the pastor of First United Methodist Church in Pilot Mountain, North Carolina. And I want each and every one of you to know that it is my sincere honor and privilege to be with you this morning as we journey through this sacred time together. So welcome here to Hagri Lutheran Church, and may God bless our time and this service. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our dear sister Shirley Ann Payne, to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. We ask that God would grant us grace that in pain we may find comfort, in sorrow hope, and in death resurrection. When we are baptized in Christ, we are baptized into his death. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Will you pray with me? O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Shirley. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in victory, in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints through jesus christ our lord amen now i invite you to stand so that we may worship god together and take out a blue hymnal though with one voice turn to page 699 and let us sing together blessed assurance may we lift our hearts and our voices up to our god as we sing
It is most appropriate to turn to the scriptures in all circumstances. The word of God contained in the Old and the New Testaments supply us with an everlasting message of hope and love. So it is my prayer that God will add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of these sacred words. Our Old Testament lesson comes from the familiar psalm, Psalm 23. I invite you to hear these words now. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now from the New Testament, from the Gospel according to St. John, I will share selected verses from chapter 14. Jesus says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. All this I have spoken while still with you, but with the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. This is the word of God given to us, the people of God. Together may we say, thanks be to God. Amen. So today we celebrate Shirley's life. And I want to say personally what an honor it is to be here and to be here in her and Jim's home church. It is believed that this is the place that Shirley longed for. She even told Nancy, I miss home so much during their last visit. So perhaps this was home, the home she was referring to, Hagri Lutheran Church, the place where she and Jim were baptized. Where they, would, where they were confirmed, and where they were married, and now where they have come home to rest. I moved to Pilot Mountain during the pandemic, and when I was able to make home visits, as I like to do, visiting with members of the church, and as soon as vaccines came available, I rolled up my sleeve and got my shot, and then I asked Julie, who works in our church office, if she would schedule visits with our homebound members. And Jim and Shirley was all the list, and soon appointment was scheduled for a lovely Pilot Mountain afternoon in their home. When I arrived, I took notice that the home was well appointed. Plants and flowers on the front porch were there to welcome all who came. As I sat in their front room, I noticed the decor and the mementos on display in their tidy yet comfortable space where Shirley and Jim and I spent the next 90 minutes getting to know each other. After COVID restrictions lifted and we returned to worship inside our sanctuary at First United Methodist Church, one Sunday morning, Julie brought Shirley to church. And I remember seeing Shirley's smiling face as she was sitting in a pew. And I remember the way that she carried herself in a grace-filled and polite manner as I greeted her at the end of the service in the narthex. It was quite evident that she felt at home in the house of God. And she felt at peace as she heard the music of our faith and the scriptures read and the word of God proclaimed. 
One of my favorite memories of Shirley is when I went to visit with her at Pretty Manor in King. And Jim had recently passed away, but before he did, he and Shirley had made the front page of Pretty Manor's newsletter. They had just celebrated their 66th wedding anniversary. And I imagine that was a rare occasion at Pretty Manor for they did not have many married couples in residence. As I was talking with Shirley, something in the conversation made her think of the article. And she quickly got up and she went over to her dresser and opened one of the drawers and there she pulled out the newsletter. She wanted me to see it. She was so proud of Jim and so proud of their marriage. One of our ladies groups in the church always makes big, huge baskets of treats at Christmas time filled with candy and all kinds of items to bring comfort and joy during the Christmas season. As we were standing around the table looking at all the completed baskets, I asked if I could be the one to deliver Shirley's to Pretty Manor. So I took it to her one afternoon and went to her room and she immediately opened the package and began going through all the items and then she found the little tiny candy bars buried way deep down inside. It will forever remain a secret between Shirley and I how many candy bars she had that day. <laughs> But I will tell you that after she had finished feasting, she was ready for a nap. And so we had a prayer and I was on my way. On one of our last visits, after she had moved to memory care, I went to see her. And she was in the day room there with other residents of Pretty Manor. And I went in, I greeted her, and a big smile came on her face. She looked at me and she says, you're the minister. And there was a warm light in her eyes, and I was so thankful that we could spend even more time in conversation. I know all of you have special and fond memories of Shirley, maybe some of her childhood, when she was growing up here on the family farm, or maybe when she was attending the one-room schoolhouse where she excelled academically. You might not know that she graduated a year early and the teacher of the school commented that Shirley was the best reader that she had ever seen. Not only was she good at reading, but she was also known for her athletic ability. She was the fastest runner at school. So maybe, Connor, that's where you get your running ability from. <laughs> Whenever it came time for the boys in the class to pick teams, they always picked Shirley first because they wanted her for her speed. Not only was she athletic, but she was also a talented musician. And she performed with the Minnesota Teachers Association 10 piano concert. She paid, played the piano in church, and in big canoe, she was a member of the Handel Choir in the church she and Jim attended there. Her feet might have been fast, but her wit was even quicker. Even though she had a dry sense of humor, her words always had a perfect timing. She always exhibited decorum. She wasn't one to show a lot of emotion, and she certainly wasn't one to complain or gossip. Rather, she was quiet, and her quietness camouflaged her adventurous spirit, which is why all of us are still amazed that she and friends took off to San Francisco when they were nearly out of high school. It seems almost out of character for Shirley if you were to have a conversation with her. But one time on one of our visits, I asked her about this trip to San Francisco, and she looked at me with a twinkle in her eye and then brushed it off like it was no big deal. But we all know that it was. She had a calm and steady presence about her. And Nancy and Mary and Julie all saw her as a role model for how to carry oneself and how to be respectful. She lived a disciplined life, and that included the way she spent her money shopping with, Jewel, uh, with Shirley meant that you went to the back of the store to check out the discount items or the clearance racks. And besides, she was a gifted seamstress, and she could make clothes for her daughters that rivaled those that hung in the windows of the stores. She made their dresses for Easter and Christmas, and she taught each of them how to sew as well. She loved to work with her hands. And she always enjoyed having projects to do. And she loved 
her family and her grandchildren and loved planning special things to do when they came to visit her. One special memory was the quality time that Shirley spent with Kristen, where the special project that Shirley had planned was for them to make clothes for Kristen's dolls. And Shirley still has something that I feel like my generation will miss, and especially my children's generation, and that is photo albums. On one of my visits to her home, Jim and I were talking about the antique cars that he had collected, and, and then Shirley all of a sudden disappeared. But then within a few minutes, she came to the living room with a photo album filled with all of the pictures of their time in car shows and the car club. Her photo albums were memories that she captured. Memories such as her trips to France where she enjoyed bread and pastries from the traditional French bakeries, and also their trips to the region of Champagne. She snapped photos to capture times with Stephen and Jamie when they came to visit her and Jim in, a, in Georgia. And one of the boys had gone outside and found a scorpion and begged Shirley to take a picture. Otherwise, no one would ever believe him. And I wonder if Shirley would have been a candidate to work for National Geographic. You might not know this, but she also captured pictures of wildlife as well. And to everyone's surprise, she photographed a mama bear and three cubs just outside her home in Big Canoe. She and I often talked about the photos in her room at Pretty Manor. And she always commented on how cute Aaron and Brandon's children, Riley, Connor, and Harper, and Cooper were as we talked about those photos together. But above all, Shirley's love language was preparing meals for her family. She loved to bake Lesva, she, or Lesva, Lef, I can't say this, Lesva, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm obviously not Norwegian. <laughs> she loved to bake rosettes and cinnamon rolls and orange rolls and all other Norwegian desserts. And she had a collection of cookie recipes which she brought out at Christmas and she made dozens and dozens of cookies. It was a labor of love. Her table was well adorned. It always had beautiful dishes and pretty linens. She prepared a banquet for the ones that she loved. And many of you reciprocated that love whenever you traveled to Pilot Mountain for her 90th birthday celebration. The picture on your bulletin, and I believe the one here on the table, is from that day. And as we all know, a picture is worth a thousand words. We see Shirley with a bright smile on her face, dressed resplendently. She had on her matching pink scarf and every hair in place. She loved that you all came, and she loved to talk about that day and read the cards over and over. And she loved looking at the photos that were captured in the album for her. I believe that day was a foretaste of what is to come. You see, Jesus has promised that all who believe in him and trust in his grace will live in his perpetual light the faith that Shirley professed in this place when she was confirmed is the same faith that she practiced throughout her life. A life that was lived with discipline and intention. A life that modeled the unconditional, omnipresent love of God that resonated in Shirley's heart. And now I believe the calls of God's love and the promise of eternal life and the selfless acts of Jesus that surely is seated at the heavenly banquet that awaits each and every one of us who remains in this life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you will take out a Lutheran book of worship, turn to page 439 and stand as we sing together what a friend we have in Jesus.
Let us affirm our faith using the affirmation of faith that is printed in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. As we move into our time of prayer, using this prayer of intercession, I will lift up several petitions. At the conclusion of each petition, I will pray, God of mercy, and then you are invited to pray by praying, hear our prayer. Let us pray together. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and a sure and certain hope in your loving care that, casting all their sorrow on you, they may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that where this world is in grief and pain, your Holy Spirit may lead us to bear witness to your light and life. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Help us in the midst of things we cannot understand to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to life everlasting. God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because of his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. If you will stand once again, take out the Lutheran Book of Worship, turn to page 518, and may we sing together, beautiful sing. Let us lift our hearts and our voices up to our Lord. Thank you. 
Friends, following the benediction, we will recess out to the cemetery for the commendation and committal of Jim and Shirley Kane. Following that, you all are invited to join together downstairs for a meal. But for now, hear this blessing. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God, Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always.